Kathy from Easy Sunday Club. In today's video, I'm going to discuss a question that popped up in our comment section that I thought would be interesting to address in the video format. Um, someone asked how I made my decision to rebrand my business. So I renamed my business from something that was named after myself, CY Zane Design, into Easy Sunday Club toward the end of year two of my business. So I'll kind of talk about the pros and cons. Uh, that went into that decision, why I decided to change my business name when I did it, and also share the process that I took to brainstorm, come up with a new name, as well as the legal stuff that went into making the name official. And before I start, I just wanted to let you guys know that thanks to your support, our channel is growing slowly but steadily, and we're at the point where it's hard for us to respond to every single question that's coming in on the comment section, on DM, and emails. We do read almost all of them, um, and we're in the process of compiling them into an FAQ video. But please continue to leave those questions in the comments or email us. Um, we will do the best we can to address as many as possible. And sometimes we may even dedicate a whole video on a question like this one. And if you've already watched our content, please give us an early thumb up. Stay subscribed if you want to be notified when the FAQ video is coming out or subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so let's get into this topic. In year two of my business, um, I had been mulling over the idea of changing my business. The main reason was I wanted to build a business that would grow beyond myself. Um, it wasn't so much that I wanted to sell my business one day to a, another larger company or anything. I didn't care so much for the personal branding aspect of it as much as a name that would make me happy and is also functional. And I'll talk about what functional means later. But the last straw really happened when at the end of year two, I was invited to be interviewed on a podcast and at the end the host asked me how people would find me online and because my business name was CY Zang at L, uh, CY Zang Design or CYZang.com I had to spell out the entire word letter by letter and I felt like it just added confusion to it and it also like loses its spark so after that I've decided to change my name and of course it kicked off like a six month process before I officially did it. So, um, and I'll talk about, you know, the key criteria I use to come up with my new name. As I may have already alluded to this, the first and foremost criteria is it should be easy to pronounce and spell. My original business name was CY Zhang and it's not even the letter C or Y. It's confusing because it's S-E-E-W-H-Y, not the letter C and Y. So there's so many ways to interpret that business name without you spelling it out that I felt like it was counterproductive to it being a, a business name. Reason number two is I wanted a business name that would help showcase the personality, the style of the business a little bit. Uh, I was making whimsical, playful, and like calming watercolor art. And Easy Sunday Club kind of gives off that relaxed Sunday morning vibe that my own name didn't provide, right? And of course, coming up with a name like that from scratch is not easy. <laughs> it did take me at least six months, but um, I can talk about my process in a bit. The third criteria is I didn't want to be restricted by my name. And what I meant was my first business name was CY Zing Design because I thought I was just gonna you know, do watercolor art and sell art prints and originals. But by year two, I knew that I wanted to, I wanted to grow beyond that. If not immediately in the short term, then definitely in the long term. Design limits the perception of my business as you know either I provide design service or I only make like 2D art and I just didn't want to be limited to that anymore. And the fourth criteria which I think a lot of people use as the first criteria is to look up if the URL is available. That's a very much a 21st century problem because there are a lot of URL 
farms out there or I don't know hoarders out there that have bought up every single domains out there and dot com um, but I would say don't make that your first criteria because nowadays people more than welcome and trust domains that don't end with dot com sure mine has dot com at the end but that wasn't the main reason that I chose that business name um, no you can you can register under .co or .us or .ca if you're Canada or .shop. Uh, I've seen a lot of independent brands that have popped up with .shop at the end and it doesn't decrease the credibility of their business. But you can always add something at the end of the domain too. Like I could have put Easy Sunday Club Co or something. So don't let that be your first priority is what I'm saying. Of course, there's the legal requirements. You want to make sure that there isn't an existing trademark of that name. Nam will talk about that part later as well. But I would say, you know, come up with a name that you're happy with and then you can always tweak it to make it legally sound as well as, you know, available on the internet. Let's talk about the brainstorming process. So the process I came up with is a combination of what works for me and it's also heavily influenced by um, this book that I read on naming your business. It's called Hello, My Name is Awesome by Alexandra I think Watkins. So I just want to give her credit because she owns a um, branding and business name consultancy, <laughs> I guess. And she is an expert at this topic. So she really breaks the process down into like easy to follow steps if you don't have the money to hire a professional consultancy like hers. So I definitely recommend that book and the link is in the video description below. So for me, this is how I went about it. Um, I didn't have any great starting point other than the criteria that I talked about. So what I did is I wrote down on a piece of paper just a list of words that I liked. I narrowed it down to words I liked and that were short and easy to spell and you know which was the first criterion but also words that I can kind of see it tied into um, as being associated with my style of art at the time. Next thing is I cut the words out <laughs> and start trying to place them next to each other to see how they look next to each other because sometimes you may think of two words separately but you may not think about how they sound with each other um, so especially if you're more of a visual person you might want to try that option since you know I like to be hands-on that's the option I did but if you don't want to cut it up you can always uh, write those words on a sheet of paper kind of scrambled so not in a straight row or anything and then start drawing lines connecting different words and see how they look with each other another option is to use an online name generator i use the free tool from shopify i'll also link in the description so it's a free name generator by shopify where you can enter a word let's say like you're interested in the root word earth or natural. You type in the word natural and it will spit out a bunch of pairing words that goes with natural. And some of them don't make immediate sense but again if you're looking for something kind of unconventional that's most likely not taken yet or trademarked then um, that's a good way to go about it too but I would just warn you that you could easily go down a rabbit hole. Like I said this is not an easy process unless you already had a strong name preference so just be patient with it after i start the brainstorming process i've started to realize that i like the name sunday a lot it's arguably the most relaxing day of the week and people associated with spending time with family going to church connecting with your community or just unwinding and getting ready for the week but for a long time I saw Sunday was kind of like my last day of freedom before another dreadful week because I wasn't happy with my previous career. So I wanted to use that name aspirationally as a reminder that I'm building something that would change how I feel about that day. So you know, Sunday might feel differently to different people, but 
it has a special meaning to me, but it also universally means something somewhat positive. And from there, I thought, what would pair well with Sunday? And Easy Sunday came to me pretty quickly because, uh, you know, it just gives a feeling of like relaxation, not having a worry in the world. I liked the way it sounded, but I had to make sure that the pairing Easy and Sunday isn't trademarked. So I looked it up. It turned out Easy Sunday by itself is already trademarked. It doesn't mean that I had to give it up. So from there, I started brainstorming another word that goes either in the front or the back of it. And what I ended up going with is extracting the first letter of the of each word. So Easy Sunday is E-S. And I thought it would be cool to add something that starts with the C um, because E-S-C stands for escape or is the escape key on the keyboard and to what I said earlier it is I'm trying to escape like a life where I'm dreading Sundays and Mondays. <laughs> Nam and I were just driving one day and we thought like hey what about club? Club seems welcoming and fun and it's not restricting because we could have a club of art collectors, we could have a club of creatives and artists like you guys are watching right now. So that felt good. Um, after that, I let it sit for at least another two weeks. I mean, yes, I did register the domain <laughs> right away after looking it up and seeing that the .com is available. If it wasn't available, I would have gone with .co. Um, that's not really a deal breaker for me. I registered for the domain, let it simmer for two to three weeks and then started process of rebranding. So after I've decided on the name, I hired a logo designer to design a new logo for me because I wanted a fresh pair of eyes on my business. And I completed the rebranding exactly a year later, I would say. So it's a long process, but don't be discouraged by it. I think it's pretty fun to brainstorm, uh, especially if you already have a name already. If you're naming, if your business is named after yourself or your Etsy store is named after yourself, just leave it there for now and think of another name at the same time. If you haven't started already, don't get bogged down by all of this. Just start with your own name. You can register a business under your name and um, change it legally to something else or add a DBA doing business as. And Nam will talk about what you should do legally to make that happen. Hi, this is Nam and I'm here to Nam explain you the legal stuff. So before you go and pick a new business name, you have to check out with the US Patent and Trademark Office of whether or not the name is already taken up by somebody else. Because if you use a name that someone else trademarked, then you might get sued. So I don't want you to get sued, and I don't want to get sued either. When you go on the USPTO, you go to the TESS site, or TESS, and you can go and do a search for all the trademarks out there and see if your unique unicorn name has been taken yet. If it hasn't been taken, then great. That's one step down. The next thing you, can, you should do is also go and uh, search to see whether or not that domain has been taken up at a site like godaddy.com or another URL provider. Assuming all of that's done and you've picked this amazing, unique name, the next thing you gotta do is file some paperwork. And when I think about what type of paperwork you should be filing, it depends on what business entity. If you have a limited liability corporation or a corporation, then what you need to do to make it officially changed is to go to the Secretary of State where you originally filed that entity and file a name amendment. They will have a form, you fill it out, you pay a fee, and you file it. But that's not it. You also have to go to the IRS to inform them, and then you also have to apply for another employer identification number. And then you're still not done. You also have to go to your banking, permits, and any licenses that you have and update all that information. And then you're still not done. Now you gotta go make a communications and inform all your customers and rebrand your webpage and all of those items or anything else you can think of. 
it is a real pain and it is a serious transformational effort. So we didn't go that route with filing with the Secretary of State and having to update all those licenses. The way that we do it and a simpler way that you can do it, no matter if you have an LLC, corporation, sole proprietorship, or general partnership, is you file something called a DBA or doing business as. That allows you to keep your original legal name with all of the entities like Uncle Sam, IRS, the bank, licenses, permits, and Secretary of State, but you file this uh, form that allows you to do, do business as this other name. So that's why we just do business as Easy Sunday Club, while our legal name is still CY Zhang LLC. Hope that answers your questions. If it doesn't, you can always drop another question. And here's Kathy back with the other touchy-feely stuff. So in conclusion, should you change your business name or should you use your own name as the brand? It's really up to you, but if you are watching this video, maybe you had a nagging feeling that you wanted to use something else. If anything I said in the video, especially in the first half, resonates with you, then go for it. Start the brainstorming process, try the exercise I talked about, and see what you come up with. And again, I hope this video is helpful and to help you move forward with your creative business. Please give us a thumb up if you haven't yet. Subscribe and I'll see you next time.